Shalom, family, in the name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. It's your brother, the preacher, and we have uh, actually a special uh, broadcast or video that I'd like to do today. And I'm speaking about the Feast of Tabernacles, what is called Sukkot. And, you know, I titled, I titled Preparing for Eternity as the... Festival seasons have a prophetic connotation. They have, it's speaking of things that have already happened, but things that are going to happen. And on our, on our calendar, it's, it's very important to, to acknowledge what is, what is transpiring. And so I just want to start by doing an introduction. And then as I go along, especially the ending of this week, as we have a, uh, service that we'll be doing and then we'll be getting into the days of Sukkot which are seven days and then finally an eighth day uh, which is another celebration and and so these times are very very important they're dear to us as a family and we want to share them with you uh, as 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 we celebrate amen and so we're going to get into a little bit of detail which I like to do and, and give you some, some information as far as, you know, what this entails and, and, you know, how, how it connects prophetically in the body of Christ. I think these are important things that we can discuss and talk about. And it gives a lot of information and it gives a lot of revelation to the words of Yeshua, the actions of Yeshua. And again, uh, it's a time of rejoicing. It's a time of festival. And so as we, we do a little bit of detail, the, the calendar, there's a quick transition from a somber time, which we did a video on Yom Kippur. We also did our festival um, service with Yom Teruah, which you know as, as Rosh Hashanah. And so you can go back and, and see some of those lives. We did one for Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah and we did one for Yom Kippur, which is a, a time of celebration. For the believer, it's not really a sombering moment. I mean, you can if there's some things in your heart that you need to deal with. But when you come to when you come to Christ, when you come to the Lord, man, it's a time of celebration. So him being our our Kippur, basically, our are covering that which was sprinkled on the mercy seat. We we have a we have a lot to rejoice for. So there's a transition from Yom Kippur to the festival of Sukkot, and that's a transition of of five days from from Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur are ten days, and then once Yom Kippur happens, we go on to Sukkot, what you know as the Feast of Tabernacles, and so. In the High Holy Days, focus on the Lord as a creator, our judge, and one who atones for our sins. Sukkot is a time when we joyously celebrate all that he has done for us. Prophetically understood, and this is what I wanted to talk about in getting in preparation for eternity. Amen. Prophetically understood, the seven days of Sukkot picture in Hebrew, it's called Olam Haba which is the world to come, amen, and the millennial kingdom of Mashiach ben David, or the Messiah, son of David. If Yeshua was born on Sukkot, which most scholars, uh, on the plus side of scholars believing that Jesus was born around September, October time, then that says that he can, that he was the conception of Yeshua Jesus was around uh, December, which is the time of Hanukkah, which is the festival of lights. Amen. Now I'm not getting into the debate and the fight. Most scholars agree that he was born around the fall time, and it's okay. It's a, Am I coming after people who celebrate Christmas? No, we have family members who celebrate Christmas. Learn to be a light to people. And instead of getting into meaningless debates, 
learn to be a light and love people and you'll you'll have great success amen so this gives another meaning to the word became flesh and tabernacled amongst us john 1 14 and extends to the coming kingdom age when we or when he will again suka he will tabernacle amongst or with us during the glorious reign from zion amen and so this year it'll be on friday night it'll begin and it'll run all the way till october 6th and then at october 6th it'll end and then we go into what is called shmeni atzaret which is a lingering and we'll do a whole teaching on on lingering and the eighth day and the surplus as as we go along in these teachings so stand by i would subscribe to the channel like share all of those things amen uh, in addition there are some things that are done during su sukkah or sukkot sorry uh, and that's building a sukkah and it's building a, a temporary hut that's what sukkah uh, when you read uh, festival of tabernacles that word there is sukkah and it's a hut and a temporary hut is built to remember that the children of israel traveled in huts for, but more more interesting than that is that we live in a temporary hut we will put off this we will put off this tabernacle and we will be made like him we don't know we'll be made like but we'll be made like him amen so all of this is what i mean all of these festivals especially the one that we're talking about right now they're very very symbolic they're very uh intricate in in our belief in in what we're in what we're experiencing in the bible and and it comes alive it comes alive and it, and it should come alive in the believer sukkot is the conclusion of the fall holiday seasons and is the last of the three shelosh regalim and that means the three uh, festivals that where they have to present themselves uh, at jerusalem and that's found in, in deuteronomy 16 16 where it's pesach Shavuot, Sukkot, Passover, Pentecost, and Feast of Tabernacles. It can be argued that Sukkot is the climax of all the festivals in Scripture. Everything leads to it as a culmination of God's prophetic plan. Interesting is compared to use the words relating to Simcha, joy. That happens to be our youngest daughter's name is Simcha. Amen. And that means joy. And this is a this festival is a time of rejoicing because it's a time of ingathering. You're gathering all of the produce. Amen. In Deuteronomy 16, 13, it says, You shall keep the feast of Sukkot or tabernacles seven days. And when you have gathered in the produce, you shall rejoice in your feast because the Lord your God will bless you in all your produce, in all the work of your hands so that you will all together be joyful and it's interesting because the, the gathering the in gathering does not yeshua jesus say that on that great day he will send forth his angels and they will gather in they will separate the the wheat from the tares and the tares will be thrown in the fire and the wheat will be put in the storehouse amen and that's what this scripture is saying you will gather in the produce you will bring in all that the Lord has blessed you with. Amen. And so these are very prophetic scriptures when we think about what Yeshua said, what Jesus spoke about. Amen. From a spiritual perspective, Sukkot corresponds to the joy of knowing our sins were forgiven during Yom Kippur. We, we don't have to beat our chest. We don't have to take a chicken and put it over our heads. We don't. We have the Lamb of God that was that was sacrificed that was slain from the foundations of the earth amen he has an everlasting covenant through his blood amen and he also recalls god's miraculous provision and care after the deliverance from bondage in egypt leviticus 23 14 prophetically sukkot anticipates the coming kingdom of yeshua wherein all the nations 
shall come up to Jerusalem to worship the Lord during the festival. And if you think that these festivals are not to be celebrated, you have another thing coming. And you might you might uh, have a problem with that. You might, oh, no, you'll get offended. But what does scripture say to us? And that's that's the biggest point that I'm making is what does scripture say to us? Well, in the book of Zechariah, chapter 14, verse 16, it says, then everyone who survives of all the nations that have come against Jerusalem shall go up year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the festival of booths. So this is this is this is prophetically speaking. Because we're you know, Zechariah 14 is talking about the day of the Lord, the Lord's coming, and what ha and what happens. And so to think or say that. We shouldn't, oh, those are, I, I don't, they're the feast of the Lord. Leviticus 23, if you look at the heading, it says they're the feasts of the Lord. They belong to God. Have they been handed over to the Jewish people? Absolutely. Do Jews and non-Jews come together? Absolutely. So aren't we part of one household? That's why I can't stand denominations. That's why I can't stand, um, you, you're this, I'm that. No. I mean, yes, my culture, my history, we have. As, as we've done a lot of times in these segments, we talk about our history, we talk about our culture, we talk about our family, uh, our African culture, you know, the, 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 the Hispanic culture, all of those things that we're, that who I am, but man, we are, we are one in Christ. We are one body. Hallelujah. And he continues to say here, uh, if, if any of the families of the earth do not come up to Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, there will be no rain for them. And if the family of Egypt does not come up to present themselves, then on them there shall be no rain. There shall be a plague with which the Lord afflicts the nations to do, to do, or sorry, to afflict the nations that do not come up to the Feast of Booths. This shall be a punishment to Egypt and a punishment to all the nations that do not go up to keep the festival of booths. That's how important it is that it's in end time prophecy. And that's why I am I've, I've put what I put preparing for eternity, preparing for, for the Lord, preparing for God. I think I actually had one more note. You'll hear my, my daughters in the background messing around let's see if i had another note there are certain readings that are read uh, during this cycle so we'll suspend torah nuggets for this week because we're going into uh, sukkot and then for seven days there are readings each day and i'll read each day and then there's some other teachings that i want to get into we did a little bit last year of the teachings from the booth, and that's talking about certain patriarchs that have come through history. Amen. Uh, obviously, we'll read from John 7, where Yeshua, Jesus, is celebrating the festival of, uh, of tabernacle or the booths, and there's a certain tradition that was done during Sukkot, the libation, the drawing of water, and this is why he stands up and speaks the way he speaks, uh, that he is the living water. So there's a ton of things. Uh, this is basically an introduction of what I'd like to talk about uh, this week. Six months time. <laughs> and uh, I'm excited for, for this weekend's uh, service. For me, this is you know, well, I love, I love, I love all the feasts, but, uh, you know, this happens to be one of my favorite and, and Hanukkah is another uh, favorite of mine. I just, I, you know, winter time and things like that. But again, we'll be getting into some, 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 some good stuff this week as far as uh, tabernacles go and all that the Lord is doing with us. We were up at the school today, 180 kids came to the meeting, so we were very excited about that. Uh, and so support the ministry, 
dollar sign three john one five that's coming across your 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 screen right now and we'll get zell going i know some people have asked me for zell let me see what else we preached in the park i'm trying to get that video up for you uh, so you know you know probably read uh, revival in sanford park and i mean it's got little kids gave their lives to the lord so i'm 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 just excited of of the way god is moving and and working in and through the ministry and in and through the calling and we're just uh we're just grateful we're just grateful that that god can that god would have even just use us in such a way amen so i um again this is just an introduction preparing for eternity preparing for the kingdom of god and we know that jesus is coming soon and so we love you family in the name of yeshua jesus christ shalom shalom